We tend to imagine futuristic ancient civilizations with sophisticated society and occasional burst of electrical energy from top of the pyramids drop in the sky. What if I tell you that antiquity was on the verge of industrial revolution? I scoured the internet to discover blueprints and models that don't fit the traditional paradigm. Here are the three examples that definitively prove the equivalent, if not superior to ours, the knowledge of our ancestors. The Antikythera mechanism is said to be designed and made by Archimedes, dates back to the 2nd or 1st century BC. It is often described as an analog computer because of its intricate system of gears, dials and pointers. It is made of at least 30 mesh and bronze gear wheels and they all are carefully calibrated. The gears were operated through a hand crank. It was used for predicting astronomical positions and events. Sun, the moon, the planets, the eclipses. It could also track the cycles of ancient calendar. The level of mechanical and mathematical sophistication in Antikythera mechanism is highly compelling and impressive. It demonstrates the advanced capabilities of ancient civilizations. We took x-ray data of all the 82 surviving fragments of the mechanism. And when we first looked at the results, it was astonishing because it showed us not only all the gear wheels in three dimensions so we could separate them, but it showed us all these new inscriptions in the fragments as well. We've had to rethink the history of technology completely as a result of this single object. Since the times of Archimedes, 300 years later, Hiron of Alexandria comes around. He was a mathematician, inventor, and you could say the first engineer. Hiron's hero engine idea made way to automatically open temple doors, powered by a fire altar and a hydraulic system. The invention called number 37. The idea was that temple doors should open automatically when a fire is lit and close again when the fire is distinguished. By lighting the fire above the ground in an altar in front of the temple, heat would form and build up the pressure into a soldered vessel beneath the temple. The liquid within the vessel would get pushed through the hose into another vessel hanging from the ceiling and connected to the underground door posts of the temple doors. By the added weight, the second vessel would pull the ropes attached to the door posts and doors would open magically for the spectators. When the fire is distinguished, the reverse mechanics would close the doors. So what happens inside the temple? Once inside the temple, the worshippers would place a coin into the vending machine and receive holy water to base themselves with before praying. Dropping a coin into the slot machine initiates the chain reaction. The coin is landing on a small plate attached to a lever. The weight of the coin depresses the lever, lifting a stopper to release the holy water. After the lever tilted, the coin would slide off the plate and weight of the stopper would pull the lever back to the original position to close the valve. Thanks to Hiran, the church now was making money like a well-oiled machine. Hiron invented a whole bunch of devices which effectively could start an industrialization. In fact, the Roman had a very developed industry, analogous to that of medieval Europe. Whether the cheap slave labor back then, or inability to gear it up on a higher level of production, but something put a standstill for industrialization back in the beginning of our era. Imagine where we would be now if industrialization had taken place in the times of Huron 2000 years ago. I guess the answer is, we'd be living in one of those futuristic civilizations we're still imagining now.